What's going on there folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on this Saturday, February 11th, 2023. It's about 12:19 p.m. here along the West Coast in the state of California. Latest activity shows a 3.1, well, in the red flag from the EMSC. Also some activity kicking up here around the uh, Southern California area. And of course, aftershock activity continuing there into the turkey area overnight all right let's go ahead and jump into space weather activity right off the bat we did have an x flare come in uh way earlier this morning see that peeking out here on the solar flare uh, x-ray flux chart the x flare category right up here with the line barely peeked into it uh that was a uh definitely a strong flare see what the uh exact looks like an X 1.1 from 3217 that sunspot region there around the southeastern section of the Sun that's uh, one that we were watching last night the ginormous sunspot and I uh, definitely knew this thing was getting ready to pop off uh, some flaring and I don't believe we're done whatsoever but uh, that's pretty nice flare X 1.1 from 3217 and it does harbor some potential uh, for some further strong flaring Again, 3217 is this large regional sunspot. There's a couple different numbered sunspots in here. Uh, looks like 3219, 3220 down here. 3217 is the X flare um, culprit there from this morning. And that does harbor a uh, pretty complex system. If we look at it in a little bit more detail, uh, this specific sunspot harbors a uh, very complex structure. Notice the blue, the yellow, and uh, all the intermixing here of the colors indicating close proximity of the magnetic structure. This whole regional sunspot looks very active, so we'll continue to watch that um, in the coming days. 3217 does harbor a Beta Gamma Delta class as listed up here. Uh, they have updated it, which is appropriate for the, uh, uh, the way that thing is set up. Pretty nicely uh, intermixed there with the uh, structure. So, so far this one's produced at least noteworthy events in M3.0 and the X1.1 that we've seen this morning. And um, I don't believe we have any major CMEs headed this way. Um, uh, it was a quick, really quick uh, X flare that popped off. Um, now a long duration X flare with a subsequent CME that would ultimately um, require a little bit more review to see if that were uh, headed to the earth at least in the earth direction far as any major changes here uh to the three day this is the aurora forecast here we don't really get flares we don't get auroras from flares uh, flares adjust and affect the earth a little bit differently what we need from a um, from the sun to produce a major aurora forecast is a large coronal hole uh, spewing out charged particles or a large explosion subsequent cme following uh, either prominence eruption or a major flare eruption uh, now it's not the, specifically the flare that causes um, the auroras again this is just going to be the the cme that's blasted off and that's going to be an eruptive type of flare but we don't always see eruptive flares and i don't think we've seen one um, with this current X flare here they mention the uh, quick rising flare does not appear to be eruptive so AR 3217 is magnetically complex and will remain a threat but uh, yeah we'll, we'll watch it it is coming into more into position here as it rotates further into the center disk of the Sun that will provide a uh, shot there target bullseye shot of the earth pending anything else pops off from this regional sunspot so we'll continue to watch that here in the uh over the next couple days here again no major adjustments to the uh three day aurora forecast very minimal right now we're not looking at anything uh, up there across the area this is very low and uh, again hopefully we'll get a uh, eruptive cme or eruptive uh solar flare i should say and uh get things active all right uh, let's see what else we got um that's about it for solar flare activity. Earthquake activity, things ramping up, uh, as mentioned, down into the Southern California area. Latest quake shows a 
in the Pine Valley area of California, about 2.8 kilometers deep. We also did see a little bit of an adjustment here along the plate boundary, roughly about the Brawley seismic zone south into the Imperial Fault zone. Uh, a couple little handful of earthquakes out here. This is a region I tend to watch very closely for any major swarms because it is in close proximity to the, uh, well, the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. This is going to be where the big one's going to be one day. <clears throat> Similar to the uh, Turkey earthquake magnitude, potentially larger. Um, so that's uh, definitely on my eye, on my list here of uh, areas to watch. But for now, a little bit of earthquake activity down there in Southern Cal. And it's stretching up here across the ocean here of Southern California uh, with another earthquake, a 3.0. That one coming in yesterday way off the coast here. Um, 10 kilometers deep. Been getting a little bit of uh, earthquake activity in this type of fashion here up against this region. So that's kind of why I'm worried a little bit about any major swarming or further activity um, up against the San Andreas Fault. We'll continue to monitor that though. The Ridgecrest area, a little bit of spotty activity overnight and yesterday up into uh, the Sierra Nevada. Things are very quiet up here across the uh, mountain range, uh, including Nevada as well. Not a whole lot going on. Bay Area of California, not a zip zero coming in there to that region. A little bit of activity across the Clear Lake Volcanic Field and also over here in the lower lake area once again. Very shallow earthquake at the surface level, 2.3, negative 0 0.7 kilometers deep. Uh, in the Northern California, the Cascadia Subduction Zone, all these uh, three earthquakes from yesterday, a couple of them deep, uh, some shallow out there, but... Uh, we have seen a little bit of an increasing activity in the trimmer department here across the southern end of the Cascadia. So we'll check that tonight and we'll watch for some further activity here at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, throughout the plains area, looks like we had one more earthquake, 1.8, near the Fairmount, Oklahoma area outside of Enid. And um, there's a 2.1 there yesterday. No further noteworthy activity to mention across the rest of the country. Things very quiet uh, down here in the Puerto Rico area. A little spotty movement. We haven't really seen the return of the major swarming down here uh, into the southwestern edge of Puerto Rico, but a, a broader scale of movement currently still in place, including a 3.0, about 12 kilometers deep around the Puerto Rico region. South America, not a whole lot going on. One more earthquake, it looks like, into the Chile area. 148 kilometers deep. That's just after uh, midnight last night. Uh, a quick glance here at the EMSC model confirms that. Uh, only another smaller quake in the mix there, a little 3.3. Uh, let's see what else we got. New Zealand, Kermadec Trench, all looking uh, fairly quiet. There was a 3.9 down here into the area. Let's see exactly where that's at from the GeoNet servers. Uh, 3.9 four days ago goodness Let's see what we got here all magnitudes now these guys are saying it was a 5.1 I mean let me look that up here hold on a second here GeoNet's been a little on the odd side here lately and that's kind of why I pulled them by the way I did pull them off of the earthquake 3d globe because of their um, lack of factual data that they report up there a lot of earthquakes way above the magnitude of what they should be um yeah emsc reporting a 3.9 that occurred at uh, 180145 180145 um ah goodness i wonder if it's that one it could be that 3.9 here 335 kilometers deep Kind of looks like that's where it's at, right? On the interactive map here as well. We'll check this. Yes, looks like that's about it. Into the uh, southern end of the Kermadec Trench. Now, I'm not for sure where they're getting this 5.1 from. <clears throat> 100 kilometers deep. Uh, into the uh, Kermadec Trench as well. Let me check out some of these uh, earthquake drums and see if we can spot this out real quick. That may very well be that 5.1 coming in. Uh, 
into some of the graphs this is going to be this area right here uh, so if that is the case then that is legit and the emsc is not picking up on it nor is uh, usgs so a little odd a lot of times i like to verify it because usgs was throwing up six pointers here a couple days ago and there was literally no sign of a six pointer in the area uh, but this here looks a little bit more realistic it's a recent quake and it would be roughly within that time period of where they said a uh, a 5.1 struck so 5.1 an hour ago 100 kilometers deep into the southern end of the uh, Kermadec trench there all right so that looks like a legit earthquake. Nothing showing up though from the EMSC nor the uh, USGS in that. Alrighty, moving on here. Uh, things look very quiet across the Fiji area, Samoa, Solomon Islands, all very quiet as well. A little bit of westward pressure movement here across the Indonesia area. Did see a 5.9 come in early this morning, just after midnight actually. Uh, that originally came in as a 6.1, but that uh, got downgraded. And a little bit of activity across Japan and Taiwan as well. No major adjustment up here across the northwestern section of the plate. And things across the Himalayas, Middle East, all look fairly quiet in terms of earthquake movement. EMSC model shown roughly about the same across the area. And earthquake activity continuing there in Turkey. That's going to continue for a little while. Definitely uh, 15 earthquakes listed up on the map here today, all above 4.0. The largest so far looks like a 4.6. couple of those 4.6 uh, in the area today. The Atlantic Ocean, uh, one earthquake down here. That was, uh, I believe that's coming in just earlier this morning. 5.2 in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, a little fracture zone out here. All right, let's see what else do we have. Anything else on the Earth Earthquake 3D globe here? That's just really weird. They don't mention that uh, 5.1 down there. A little odd. I may, uh, well, I don't know. I, I just don't know if I want to key back up the GeoNet servers in there. We'll see how it does. We'll see if the EMSC reports this uh, five-pointer or not. All right, uh, let's see here. Yellowstone National Park. See what we have going on here. I got a busy day ahead of me, so I got to get going here very, very soon. Earthquake activity here at Yellowstone uh, still continuing. A couple of small microquakes over the course of the last few hours and overnight. Those are going to be some of the the red registered lines here. These spikes. USGS, uh, for the most part, doesn't show anything over the weekends. That include areas up here along the Pacific Northwest and Yellowstone, uh, unless it's above 2.5. And those earthquakes I showed you there on the graph are well below that. So therefore, they're not even going to show those. They'll probably get to them on Monday, and then they'll be added back onto the map. But uh, what they did get over the last, oh, last couple days here, earlier last week, about 85 earthquakes listed up here in Yellowstone. Um, pretty good number. There's probably a few more that uh, need to be accounted for in there, but uh, at least they're counting the majority of the smaller ones as well. Uh, but again, that's only during the week. Why? I don't know. If they need somebody looking at these in the weekend, let me know. I'll try to do my best to cover them, but I just, uh, yeah, I don't know why they don't report the smaller quakes. All right, Alaska area. We did have some movement uh, yesterday into the Aleutian Islands, the Rat Islands area, 4.4. General light activity stretching up into the uh, uh, main area of Alaska. Not a whole lot going on up there currently, just some microquakes. And in the Big Island, along the Big Island southeastern coast here, stretching off towards the Loihi Seamount, still seeing some activity with about 12 earthquakes here on the map over the last 24 hours. All right, folks, um, again, keep an eye on the space weather. That's uh, kind of a big deal right now. 15% chance for an X flare, 70 for an M flare, 99% certainty for a C flare. And uh, with that massive sunspot region coming around, I think it's definitely uh, worth watching pretty closely. All right, guys, enjoy your Saturday. Enjoy your weekend. We'll be back here 
after a little while a little bit later tonight with the uh, update video here again like I say I have a, quite a bit of school work and stuff I need to catch up on we'll catch you guys a little bit later on have a good one